Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. This video is part of a larger series on creating the sweet spot table often used in venture capital that shows the different intersections of internal rate of return based on money on invested capital at exit or MOIC and the date of exit. In the previous videos, we've established what this table is and what it is for, how to set up an Excel sheet, and how to lay out the assumptions that we will use for what we are going to do today, which is building the base metric IRR that will then be used to populate the data table below. If you're unfamiliar with the concepts of data tables, this is going to sound kind of confusing. We're gonna do our best to explain it, that said, I would advise to make sure that you feel comfortable with your understanding of what IRR or rate of return is. Essentially, what we're trying to identify here is what's the return on our money given as an annual percentage. So we'll show this in a little more detail as we set up the calculation. So the first thing we're going to do, create the table header. I'm moving somewhat quickly through the formatting because again, this should all be things that are covered in my introduction to formatting video series also on this channel. One quick note for those who are in the venture capital space, you may sometimes see IRR called ROIC or return on invested capital. I don't like using that term because coming from a academic background in finance, ROIC is a term that gets taught to a lot of finance students and means something different. So instead of using a term that's kind of been relabeled for the venture space specifically, we're going to focus on using IRR, which is the same thing, but also what this metric is called across the finance industry beyond just venture capital. So to calculate our IRR or ROIC, the first thing we're going to do is put in the base year and the end year. So we're going to have the date, just labeling what this row is. I like thick bottom borders for headers. We're going to set one cell equal to the start date and one cell equal to the end date, start date being the day we invest. And the date being the date that we exit. So we're going to fold that too. The next thing that we're going to do is input investment. That investment is our $500,000 that we put in at the start. Now, a couple notes here. First of all, we want to display this value as a negative number. The reason that we do this is from our perspective as the investor, we are giving away or investing $500,000 at the start. And so we are receiving back a positive number. This will be important for the actual IRR calculation as well as it needs the starting year to be a negative value. The next thing that we'll input is our exit value. To calculate our exit value, what we are going to do is multiply our initial investment by five times our money on invested capital. This is the multiple for our investment. So for those who have watched a few of my videos, you probably have recognized that I like to start my formulas with a plus instead of an equal. The reason that I do that is it puts a little note in my own head hey, this is a positive value, this is a negative value, I'm flipping a symbol here, it lets me always stay on track of that, which will help reduce the errors. So what I'm going to be doing here is taking minus, because I'm gonna flip the investment value, and I'm multiplying that by the money on invested capital. Now, one question might be, why don't I just multiply by the investment shown up here. Well, the reason for that is sometimes in these models, things can get changed or manually entered. They aren't always formatted the way they should. What I'm focused on are the values in this table. So I wanna make sure we localize as much data to this table as we can, just as an extra check against the errors. So 
then the final thing we'll do is net cash flow. This looks kind of silly to break out in a situation where we just have one cash inflow and one cash outflow, but where it can become incredibly useful is if we have dividends that are being paid out in different years and maybe we want to show each individual year, or if, say, our scenario is our company is acquired and so there are warrants we have to pay to exercise at the time of exit as well. So you might see multiple uh, areas where the investment is put in or multiple areas where an exit value is given to the investors. Exit value typically means the final exit value, but you could also put, do a partial exit through a dividend. More complicated than you need for this video, just a few general comments to keep in mind. So the final thing that we're gonna do, you know what, I don't like the blank space there. The final thing that we're gonna do is calculate the internal rate of return or IRR. So what this number is going to reflect is saying, if I could grow my investment at this percentage a year, if I can grow my $500,000 investment at this percent per year, I will end up with this number. So we're back solving into a rate of appreciation on our capital. There's a lot more that goes into the IRR definition. If you're unfamiliar with that metric, I would encourage you to check out Investopedia or a few other sources to familiarize yourself because we don't have time to cover it all in this video. So calculating IRR, there is an IRR function, there is an XIRR and an MIRR. I'm gonna be honest with you, XIRR is the one I learned. I remember there's certain nuances of the other two, to be honest, I don't care to learn them right now. So we're just gonna use X, I, R, R. The first thing it's asking for are the values. We'll use the bottom table or the bottom row, row 21. The next thing it's asking for are the dates. Once we've highlighted these ranges, we hit enter, format that as a percentage, and boom, we've calculated our IRR for this investment schedule. This video is created in service of a financial modeling and evaluation class that I teach. If you have any additional questions about this video, the video series, or the course, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you and have a great day.